Welcome back to Sports by GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Jeremy Lapidus. If you are just tuning in, we are going, we've been talking a lot of basketball. We just finished breaking down the Mavericks, uh, moving on to the Western Conference Final. We're going to break down the historic Game 7 that has their opponents in the Western Conference Final, that being the Minnesota Timberwolves setting a record, the largest comeback in Game 7 history. Down 20 points in the third quarter. Down 15 points at halftime. That's the largest halftime deficit ever. We'll break down that game coming up in just a second. But before we do, remember that if you would like to be an even bigger part of the show than you already are, all you need to do is go to gsmcpodcast.net. Leave a tip or donation with a message in it. That message will pop up on the bottom of the screen for you, me, and anybody else around the world to see. We appreciate everybody for tuning in, listening, watching, and talking some sports with me. If you have a burning sports question, any sport, go ahead and leave it in the comments. Leave a donation. I will get to it. Uh, I appreciate your comments, your questions. Uh, Let me know what you think of anything that I'm talking about here today. But like I was saying, we're going to break down in this segment here the final second round matchup. This one between the Timberwolves and the Nuggets, and as Anthony Edwards promised, it was a Game 7 to remember. It won't go as far as saying the best Game 7 of all time, but it was one heck of a game, and they delivered. Jokic uh, was was trying his best to keep them alive. He didn't have his greatest game. Neither did Anthony Edwards. Neither of their their number one stars had a great game. It came from their other, from their role players, from the rest of of the team that was able to come in and really make the difference. Uh, For Denver in the beginning of the game, building up that huge lead, it was Jamal Murray. You know, Jamal Murray comes in and he leads this team, his scoring output, the way that he's making shots in the first half is huge. You know, he does not miss seemingly in the first half. He powers them up to that lead. And like I said, Jokic, not an incredibly efficient game from him. You know, Jokic did have 34 points, but 2 of 10 from 3, 13 of 28 uh, from the field. Uh, he did have 19 rebounds. He was huge in the post there. But that that, uh, that that stat line doesn't really tell the whole story, right? That stat line doesn't, doesn't say everything that you want it to say uh, when we're talking about when we're talking about uh, about this game, you know, Jamal Murray powered them to this point, uh, and he didn't really get the ball. They wanted it to run through Nikola, Nikola Jokic, which, in general, is the way to get it done, right? That's usually that's usually how. Excuse me. That's usually how you you want to run your team if you're the Denver Nuggets, the defending champs. But their offense just was not clicking down the stretch. Jamal Murray stopped making all of his shots, you know, uh, I think he had two points in the last, in, down the stretch of that game, uh, you know, you look at, the, it kind of was the opposite for the, for the Minnesota Timberwolves, obviously, that's how it works, you know, you're gonna, in, in a 20-point comeback, you're gonna have one team be incredibly successful, and the other team kind of fall off a cliff there, but Anthony Edwards, even though he was having a tough game, stayed in there, hit a lot of clutch shots down the stretch of this contest. Uh, but the rest of the Timberwolves, I want to give a shout out to. You know, you have the Rudy Gobert, who famously sucks at offense. Famously is very bad at offense, hitting one of the an incredibly tough double teamed turnaround uh, fadeaway uh, mid range, nearly from the three point arc, money. That, that's not a shot he normally makes. Uh, you know, Rudy Gobert really was a huge part of this game. His defense, uh, his ability to, sh- to make life hard for Jokic, even though Jokic still had 34 points, he made life hard for him. And that's not an easy thing to do against one of the greatest post finishers in basketball history. You know, his, his moveset, his ability to get to the rim, it was, it was disrupted. And against Jokic, that's really the best you can hope for, disruption. And it threw him off his game, 
Uh, Carl Anthony Towns played a huge, huge part in this contest. Uh, he really was a massive part of what the Minnesota Timberwolves were able to do here. Uh, he got in some foul trouble again, which he does tend to do, but 23-12, and 12, a double-double in Game 7, uh, 8 of 14 from the field, I believe. Uh, he only missed one shot from inside the three-point line. So uh, it, it was... It, it was it was a great night from him, uh, Rudy Gobert again, hitting a lot of tough shots. His his defensive uh, his defensive effort as well. Again, this defense is insane. This is one of the best defenses of all time, uh, and this is the kind of defense that can help win a championship. You remember back to some of these some of these teams, uh, the Pistons in the early two thousands, powered by their defense. It's it's a similar kind of build. You know, you have the defensive player of the year, Rudy Gobert arguably one of the greatest defenses, defensive players of all time, a superstar in Anthony Edwards here. He is doing everything he can. I mean, he, he again, he didn't have a great game. You have sixth man of the year, Nas Reed, uh, coming off the bench, giving you uh, 11 huge, huge points, always providing energy, even though he's not, you know, filling up the stats sheet. Uh, he helped power a 7-0 run down the stretch of the game with about three minutes left to go in the fourth quarter. He helped he, he helped power a 7-0 run that put them up by 10 and basically put the game away. Now it doesn't it, it does it doesn't always end pretty, but the Nuggets had a very good season, right? This is this is incredibly they had a good season, but it's still incredibly disappointing for a team that is the defending champion. You know they just did not execute in this game, or really in this series. Three of three of the four games that they lost, they just did not execute. And that's not the way that they want to play basketball. Mike Malone, uh, you know, you lose the first two games at home. You win, you lose game seven at home. And then the other loss, you get blown out by 45 points. The games that they lost, they played terribly in. You know, there were games that they were executing at high levels, but... Th three of the four games that they lost in, uh, may you could even make the argument for game one, they just didn't have it in them. They looked like they were tired, out of gas, they didn't have the ability to keep going down the stretch, and it's a little concerning. I mean, I know playoff runs is are tough, right? You're going from playing in June, you get a shorter offseason than everybody else, but this Minnesota team... And this, uh, and this uh, Denver team, both of them, both of them didn't really make too many big changes in the off season, you know, and they met in the first round last season, and Denver, Denver was able to win this in five. It was a pretty easy five game series too, but. Now they meet here. It's a hard fought seven game series where Denver just disappears for three of the four games, right? Uh, disappears for a ha for halves at a time. And they had the same issue against the Lakers, but they always knew when to turn it back on, right? And they never felt, they always, they always felt like they were in control against the Lakers. But against the Wolves, that defense that was able to put pressure on them, they never really were able to figure it out. And that, that right there is the biggest loss for them, right? There's now, if, I mean, it's, you don't have, Rudy Gobert on every team, but there's a blueprint for how you can try and stop Jokic. Uh, this 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 Nuggets team kind of felt like a team of destiny, but you know this Wolves team is rewriting everything. There, the passion and energy that they play with through Anthony Edwards, uh, it's it's super exciting to watch. We talk about a changing of guard a little bit, and I'm not sure if I brought this up in any of our other segments, but I'll definitely get to it in the next segment. A little more. I'll just touch on it a little bit here, but all of all of the stars of yesterday are gone. All of these teams are powered by new age stars, and that was awesome. That second round, it really was. Uh, you're going from you're going from LeBron and KD to Anthony Edwards and Luca and Jason Tatum and Jalen Brunson and all these guys that that were here in the second round. 
there's going to be some intense rivalries in the future between some of these guys, and it's really cool to see that the NBA is having a passing of the torch moment. Um, so, great, great news for the NBA. Great series. Uh, Timberwolves defense is real. And we will break that down coming up in the next segment, where we're going to do a Western Conference Finals breakdown to end up end our show, uh, breaking down the series between the Minnesota Timberwolves and the Dallas Mavericks. So stick around for that. We will be right back on Sports by GSMC Podcast Network. 